Hi everyone, welcome to the Triessence Martial Arts channel. Today we're going to talk on a topic that we've never, we've never covered before. A while back I had a discussion with someone who believed that the Mu Thai clinch comes from Chinese martial art. And I actually told the person that this is not true. So today I'm going to talk briefly about why the Mu Thai clinch never came from Chinese martial art. So before I start, let's keep in mind that this video is not about how Chinese martial arts beat Muay Thai, alright? I really dislike that kind of topic and I think it is really pointless. Because when two persons is fighting or sparring, what really matters is the skill between the two persons. There are no such thing as this style beat that style or that style beat this style. Or this move would automatically beat another move all the time. There are no counts like that in martial art. Everything works or doesn't work depending on my skill level comparing to his skill level. Right, so this video is not about how to beat Mu Tai. Please make that clear in your mind. This video is to explain why Chinese martial art does not use a Mu Tai kind of clinch. Why it doesn't have the can't have the it doesn't have the reason to do so and why it never was done before. Right, first of all, let's just talk briefly about what the Muay Thai clinch is. I've never really done Muay Thai properly before, so excuse my movement if it's not 100% correct. Muay Thai clinch roughly refers to when my hand slips through and holds the base of his head, and the other one slips through the whole base of his head, then holds together, controls his head and neck. And then I can either low back, pull him down and knee to the face, or knee to the stomach, or if I'm closer and holding him close to my head, knee to the side of the room, like this, right? Roughly that's how the Muay Thai clinch and what they do were in it. Now, the reason Chinese martial arts, through rough 200 years of development, never adopt to this kind of method of combat, is because this, what is this safe in the ring, is not quite safe out on the street. Of course, once again, if you feel comfortable using this on the street, it's, it's fine. If it works for you, it's also fine. I only need to talk about why in the Chinese martial environment back in the days, people didn't prefer this kind of approach. Right, first of all, when you are going for this, usually the other person's hand is held over here. Right? So it makes it easier to go through for the neck. For example, I'm going to load a few punches at him, and they usually will defend by holding their hands in. And when that happens, I can then stop trying to pull his head because the hand is here. Or if his hand is there, I can try to slip through. But in Chinese martial arts, people tend to hold the hand a bit further away. So if I want to just come up to him and go for the neck, it's very hard. All right? Even if he ignores my hand going for the neck, he can punch me in the face. And if I were to set up by a few punches, his hand will also be in the way doing blocks and other things to interfere with my hand. So it's really hard to just do a few punches and go over the neck. Alright? Obviously nothing is absolute. It just can work. I'm just explaining why it's not preferred. Second of all, when I'm doing this clench to the head, his hand is free. Of course, normally in Muay Thai, from what I observe, when I'm going for the clench, he will try to clench back to me. And it becomes a clinch again where then he will try to slip his hand under mine to undercut my, my clinch, right? But if it was on the street back in the, in the, back in the days in China, what people would instead would have done is as I clinch for his neck, or he clinch for my neck, is to poke him right in the throat. Because my hands are free, right? His hand is occupying, and he needs to get here to apply the pressure and the knee. By the time it takes for him to get to my neck, I could have stabbed him in the throat. It was not legal in the tournament. Also with gloves on, it might not even slip through. But with the hand, without glove, it's quite easy to slip through. And with the finger, it's quite easy to, to reach. Even if his elbow is down, I can still reach the neck. And even if this doesn't reach, I can then poke that way. And push him away by holding down the, the hole here. And as long as he can't get a solid grip here, you see, that knee doesn't work. 
So that's another reason why in Chinese martial arts they didn't really adopt this method of combat. The next problem that you might face when there are no rules is as he clenches me and let's say my head got pulled down and he's busy trying to knee. What happens is the balls are very exposed. So it's very easy to strike the balls as the knee is coming to, towards you. And the fact he brings his head down actually helps you to see where his balls is. Alright? I mean, I'm by no means advocating hitting the ball is a very honorable or good thing. But you have to keep in mind that no one is there to stop the other guy from hitting your balls on the street. Of course, in modern day world, people are not really trained that way, so if you get on the street fight and you need somebody, it might even work most of the time. But back in the old Chinese days, where a lot of these traditional martial arts styles all have a variety of moves that attack the bulls, they are hardwired to always hit the bulls when there is a chance. Because you must keep in mind, they are not there to win a competition or to be honorable. Right? They are there to survive the conflict and go home safely. So they'll do whatever it takes to survive. And in those environments, you don't really want to expose your bulls. Even if the knee can really do a lot of damage, you don't want to give that chance for that guy to hit your ball. You might not always hit 100%, but the fact that there's a chance of it happening is bad enough. All right? So for these few simple reasons, Chinese martial arts never really involved to a point where you want to clinch the guy. Instead, if Chinese martial arts, I'm not talking about all of them, I can't represent every style, but a good portion of them, they also prefer to check the hand when they go closer. Of course, you know, in those random string strikes, it's different. But the moment I'm going closer, I don't want to grab his neck or grab his sleeve like in judo and, and throwing art. You want to always keep his hand in check. So he doesn't do funny stuff uh, like hitting in the throat of the balls or whatever. All right? So when Chinese martial go close into the range, you also want to keep his hand in check. So whatever he tries to do, can't hit me in throat, solar places, balls, temple, or any other vital point. Because you understand this is about not getting killed on the street. And the fact you don't wear gloves makes all these strikes much worse. Even a roof shot. If you have gloves on and nice condition roofs, taking a shot like this might be fun. But if it's bare knuckles, especially back in the day when people try iron hand, where they pound on iron pebble in the bag every day, I, I saw the shot to the rip my crack it. Right? All stuff that you don't want to happen. So you don't want to expose yourself by occupying your hand and letting the person's hand go free. So whenever you go from this range inwards, you always want to control the hand. And if he does something else, you always want to make sure that you keep the hand in shape. And only when that is safe, you attempt to strike him. And every time you strike, you always come back with the hand so that he doesn't hit in the roof, tempo, throat, or anything else. You want to wrap the hands up when you're close. So that is how Chinese martial arts, when there's no rules, prefer to deal going into a closer range. And because your hands always in front, it's always harder to just shoot in for the neck. Because my hand is always here. And I'm always moving around, so you can't push my hand away. If you push my hand away, I'm going to just move around it. So, that's why it's a lot harder in this environment to just go for the clinch. But like I said in the beginning, this video is not about why Muta clinch is bad or why it's not useful. It's just merely explanation of why Chinese mantra never really prefers clinch. Alright, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.